We are going to spend the next 24 hours spending the night in the camp house eating only what we can hunt or fish for. He bit like two feet in front of us, dude. No, I mean, it took about two hours. It's pretty dang tender. tender. Oh, oh, he's moving. Oh, look how brown that one's getting, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's definitely fish. In oh, there's fish right there. <laughs> so he was like unhinging his it. jaw and he had everything. It, like his head in there. Ah, why the hell did I do that? That's piping hot. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, you're a myth. What's up folks, welcome back to another video. And as you can see, I'm standing in front of the camp house because we are gonna spend the next 24 hours on the property, spending the night in the camp house, eating only what we can hunt or fish for. Over these next 24 hours, we're going to spend time hunting all different types of creatures and fishing for multi-species fish in an attempt to stay alive. Even though I'm pretty sure you can go like a week or two without eating. But nevertheless, 24 hours without food will not be comfortable. Guys, this video is sponsored by Garmin, but we're gonna talk more about them a little bit later. It's gonna be myself, Andrew behind the camera, and neighbor Daryl's gonna be popping in and out throughout this video. Gonna be helping with the cooking. Maybe he'll even tell us a story or two if we're lucky. Welcome home. It amazes me every time we come back to this little cabin in the woods that we built about how little bugs you see in here. I mean, you walk around to all the corners, all those places where you'd expect there to be spider webs and bugs and mouse droppings. You don't see any of that here. Nothing. All right, guys, we got the camp house all loaded down, got all of our camping supplies, cooking supplies, all the stuff we're gonna need. We just need food. It is 12 o'clock noon on Thursday, right there. We are going to be living off the land until at least 12 o'clock noon tomorrow. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Meal number one, we are going to try to head to the backyard pond and harvest some coal-sized bass, largemouth bass out of there. Not something that we normally eat, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Daryl has joined the chat. And of course, the goat that Daryl is, he's already gotten us a, a bucket of ice ready for some fish. He's got some faith in us. He does. He thinks we're gonna catch at least one fish to put in the ice, so he doesn't think we're gonna starve. We haven't fished the backyard pond in a while, so I honestly have no idea what to expect. Little white crankbait, you know, if we're looking for coal fish, it's a smaller crankbait. It looks like a shad, I mean. Good call. Looks like something they should eat. Let's just fire one out there. Daryl's up there on the hill taking business calls. That man never stops working. If you guys remember, we've been making small improvements to this pond over the last few months. We electrofished it just to see what the fish population looked like, and then we stocked it with thousands of new bait fish. But one of the final steps of that maintenance process and making this pond as good as it can be is removing coal bass and removing, you know, a few of them every year and just trying to keep the balance right. There we go. We're on. We're on. That might be the right size and everything. Come on, stay on there, buddy. Hey! Dude, I'm proud of you. We're not going hungry. Huh? This is the absolute perfect size. This is exactly what we're looking to cull out of the pond right now. On that little mini clutch right there. I knew it would get a little fish eventually. He don't have a whole lot of meat, but that'll be two fillets right there nonetheless. A real good cull size there. And there'd be, I'd be surprised how much meat's on that little fish. Yeah. Thank you, little buddy. I needed that. Needed you. Now, I'm no stranger to using Garmin products while fishing. I've been running Garmin units on my bass boat for the last three years, and those are my preferred units. But did you guys know that Garmin makes portable, cell phone accessible sonar that you can use as a bank fisherman, in a kayak, in a boat, whatever? Well, they do, and it's called a Garmin Striker Cast.
So I just casted out my Striker Cast device. I'm connecting to it right now via Bluetooth, via the app. There it is right there. Boom, I'll go ahead and click on that. It's water activated, so as soon as it touches the water, it's already ready to go once you charge it up. We're connected. It's that quick, folks. Boom. Oh, look at that right away. We've got temperature reading, depth reading, everything that you need right there. It's got your map feature right there showing your exact location so you can mark when you're catching fish. Oh shoot, something something just went under the freaking sonar. Did you see that? I saw that. Guys, literally portable sonar right there that quick, start to finish. It's a great little device, very affordable, and it's Christmas season, it's shopping season right now. This is a great gift for the angler in your life. I had no idea Garmin even made this product, but just another reason to love Garmin and the things that they've got going on. All right, I've got Andrew covered for lunch at least. And by covered, I mean I just have the bare minimum. I feel like if we can just get two, we each get a bass to eat. That will sustain us, make us feel fine until the next meal, you know, until supper time or until we have to go hunt or whatever the case may be. It'll hold us over. Oh, I'm on, son. I got another one. I got me a fish. Oh, he spit it. Oh, I can almost taste it. That was a little bit of a bigger one, too. I think that would have yielded one and a half fish tacos. Another one? No. What's going on here? This freaking weather's crazy. It's like the sun will be out and it feels like it's 80 and then the wind will start swirling. It'll get overcast and start raining. Yeah, it's so weird. Wow, that's a tree. You're kidding me. Right in front of us. I'm eating too, baby. He bit like two feet in front of us, dude. That was crazy. I was about to lift the lure up out of the water right there. Oh yeah. Ha uh ah! -uh. Jim, these fish are trying to stab me, man. Yes, they are. Another perfect size one, almost identical one. Oh yeah, perfect size, perfect little fillets on there. These are gonna eat up real good. They both had some meat on their bones, which also lets me know the pond might be getting a little bit healthier too, just with their average size. They're not super skinny. They don't look unhealthy. All right, we got two bass. We're not gonna spend any more time trying to feed ourselves right now. We've gotta keep in mind this is 24 hours worth of meals. We can't get bogged down just trying to feed ourselves in the moment. As for right now, me and you, my friend, have a date with a camp stove, a camp house, and some nice fresh fish. See you guys there. The old fish up on the table. Oh, camp life. There's something a little bit different about it. This is gonna be pretty neat. I'm gonna get to fillet some fish, which I love doing because I get to try it over and over again and get a little bit better at it each time. It's gonna be a nice, easy little one, two, three step process. Gonna fillet the fish right here. We have our batter right here. Then we got our little camp stove. Boom. Okay, that's higher or lower. I'm gonna keep it low for a minute because it's not gonna take me very long to fillet these fish. Throw a little Zatarain's fish fry, courtesy of Mr. Daryl. Haven't filleted a bass in a little while, so please be gentle on me. I went too deep, Andrew. Because you know how it goes, the first fillet you do is always the worst one. Agreed. But that's still a good looking little piece of meat right there. Yeah, man. Like Daryl said, you kind of kind of surprised you how much meat, that's just one fillet. That's like 20 grams of just lean protein right yep. there, man. I like them fresh. Oh, yeah. Gotta have it fresh. See, now that's probably pretty close. When, you, and when you're not sure, you just take this mm -hmm. and just, just dip it in. So, yeah, it's not quite just hot enough. another second. But you had to ruin the fish. So you just got the very tail of it. Otherwise, you got grease on the whole thing. Just go look at it when it goes in, you can tell. Oh, yeah, that's ready. That's ready. Yeah, that's right. Just, yeah, I did two at a time. See how it's bubbling and sizzling? And it's not smoking, smoking. You know, if that grease is too hot, you can smell it right away. As soon as yeah. it hits, you can smell that cornmeal burn. It's already firming up, son, that's yeah. for sure. 
Yeah, that's, that's crispy right there. Push that on that and get them all in the grease. An old trick, and Daryl knows this, when you're frying fish, you don't want the first fish to come out of the grease. You want like the second, third, or fourth round of fish because that's the one that's got the best flavor. It's no, got the true. flavor of that all. Imagine true. if you start using that Zatarans, that Cajun season, it'll mm -hmm. actually flavor your grease. Pull her out, Daryl? Yeah, I'd pull her out. Is it falling apart on you? I mean, it's a pretty hearty little piece right yeah, there. It looks kind of crispy. It? But hey, look at that little flake that's got going on right there, though. Look at the flake, you know? Where it started to break away, oh, yeah. that's a flaky looking piece of fish right there, man. So this is your stuff right here, buddy. This okay. is gonna be the good one. Right, give her a little one minute flip. Oh yeah, I'm telling you right now, that piece right there, that's the best piece of fish that came off that fish. I think these pieces are done, that's not all. Yeah. Right, this, is, this is one of my pieces. Meal number one, lunchtime. Oh my lord. You about lost Dude, it. are you kidding Whoa. me? It looks pretty good. It does. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> Clean. Tastes like a crappie. It does, it does. It tastes just like crappie to me. Oh my god. So clean. It is. It's That's a firmer fish. Like I said, bass is one of my favorite freshwater fish to eat. Oh, is that for me? Yeah, go Thanks. ahead. Yours is probably yeah, that's good. hotter than mine. It's a little hot, yeah. It's pretty hot. Yeah. It's good. It's good. It's right? really good. I never knew people ate bass like that. When I first started bass fishing, yeah. I was always catch and well, release. because you grew up in a generation of catch and release. Right. When I grew up, when I was, when I was well, even your age, nobody caught. It was just starting to come around, and yeah. catch and release was for liars. Because I'd go out there fishing, me and you, and I'd come back and say, boy, I caught 19 big old bass to turn them all loose. Right. Well, you come back, you're eating yours, so you got every fish you catch. Your catch and release first started out as a liar's club. Would you like a piece, Daryl? Give it a try. I'll try just a little piece. So I... One of yours. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh... And that is a very adequate meal for living off the land, I'd say. Doing anything with e-bikes just makes the activity way more fun. Like literally anything. Just riding down to the pond, more fun. Following Daryl, just waiting for that kayak to fall out, more fun on an e-bike. Now that we got one good meal in us, I'm feeling pretty good. But just in case the hunting does not go that well this evening, we've got some wild weather coming in. We're not sure what it's gonna look like. But just as an insurance policy, we're going to run a trot line all the way across the pond. What a trot line is, basically, is a very long piece of line, string, rope, tether, with many, many, many hooks attached to it that can be baited with whatever you want. And it can actually be a very, very effective way to catch multiple fish. Catfish are known to be bottom feeders in this pond. There's tons of them. There's a lot of meat on those catfish. So just in case we can't hunt anything up this evening, this might be a way to secure us some future food, hopefully. Yeah. We're gonna tie this trot line onto a tree on one end and just angle it across the pond, tie it to a tree on the other end, leave enough slack in the middle to where all the hooks are gonna fall into the water. It's gonna be perfect. Make sure she's tough. Oh yeah. So you guys can kind of see what we got going on here. Tied to that tree right there. We're stretching the line right now. It's gonna be kind of like an angle all the way across this way. Just using some plain old frozen shrimp as bait. Nice and juicy, got a nice scent. Now we got a center block right here. All the lines with all the hooks we just baited are running down there at the bottom. We're just gonna set that bad boy right there so no catfish pulls our line in. That's good insurance, right? Good job, buddy. Heck yeah, man. It's getting dangerously close to the hunting hour though. We gotta it start is. making some decisions and getting changed and all that good stuff and keeping an eye on the weather. All right, trot line set. We're hopping back on the e-bikes, heading back to the camp house, figure out our evening and what our next meal is gonna be. Luckily, we got that trot line run actually very smoothly and quickly so we don't have any time limitations. We can go hunting. The only problem is there is some heavy rain moving in. It's actually bearing down on us right now. I'm just hoping it goes around us. So we may have to call an audible this evening. We've got a little bit longer to wait and see. 
I've noticed a ton of you guys over the last year have been commenting on the watch that I wear and what brand it is and what it is. I've actually been wearing Garmin watches for over two and a half years now. My wife bought my first one for me. It was an Instinct Tactical Garmin watch. And I've worn that watch for the last 18 months. That's the one you guys were asking about. Then I upgraded to the Instinct Tactical 2X Solar, which as you guys can tell, has solar capabilities. This particular watch has so many features, I can't even name them all, but it's got a compass, GPS, a ton of different fitness apps and widgets, like step counters, calorie counters, heart rate monitors, all that good stuff, and literally a million other things, like a built-in flashlight that I actually use a lot more than I thought I would. The thing is just absolutely awesome. It's got all of the outdoorsman features that you would want. The really awesome thing is right now, Garmin is having a huge end of the year sale, and almost all of their watches are gonna be marked down. Guys, they have a watch for everybody's budget and everybody's activity level, everybody's purpose in life. Black Friday's coming up. Christmas shopping season is here. Click the link right at the top of the description. Go check them out. Check out their whole lineup. Folks, I just got a call from one of our property neighbors out here, and he sent me a couple pictures I want to share with you guys right now. Our neighbor's got a little bit of a hog problem, which is kind of interesting because on their property, they have them. On our property, we don't really have them that often. Point is, he wants those hogs gone. So we were thinking about going deer hunting tonight, but with this unique opportunity of having hogs just all over the place, and he's got cameras everywhere, so he knows right where they are. He knows when they're in a shootable location. So it just feels like a fun opportunity. Oh yeah. To go help oh, rid yeah. the world of invasive species, and who doesn't love bacon? All right guys, we got hogs on camera right now, so we are heading that direction. That's where they were. I'm gonna try to get one of these hogs with the suppressed AR right here, but if we can't get close enough to use that, I got my 30-06 high-powered rifle right here next to me, so hopefully we can get it done. So as we're riding around, just looking to see what we can see from the road, Morgan's also checking all the cell cameras at the same time, so we can hopefully pinpoint where these hogs are moving in between. All right, guys, we just got more pictures on Morgan's camera. They've circled back around. They've ended up basically where we started riding around. So we're hopefully they're gonna hold there long enough to be able to sneak up and get a shot. We'll see. Okay, there's 10 hogs. Like, what's your percentage gonna be? Right, make some bets real quick. Okay, 10%. 10% <laughs> <laughs> of, of the hogs? Of what's there. Yeah, okay, I'll take that. Yeah, I'm good on that. If there's 10 hogs, I might hit one. Yeah. I told y'all I'd get more than one. Dude! 
Dude, we're, oh, gee. Oh, watch Just this, fall man. in the mud. Morgan said he thinks I hit four. You think I hit four? <laughs> watch you hit four of them. Dude, no way. Dude. Dude, you were freaking laying them down. <laughs> Dude, that, that was, boy, man. That was insane, dude. That was awesome. Let's keep on looking because, I mean, there was a bunch of them. Who knows how many are still wounded that I might have to finish off. So let's <laughs> stay on our toes here. Dude, I'm so, that's awesome. Dude, we're eating tonight, baby. Dude, dang right. We're eating. We're eating tomorrow eating. night and the next night. Dude. <laughs> dude. I was very impressed. Thank you, man. Dude, I was like. Thank you. Wow. Wow. I was like. Dude, he just hit, wah. Oh my gosh, dang it. <laughs> dude, like you just kept hitting him. Dude. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you doubted I'm sorry me, I man. Doubted you. Yeah, what is wow. that, 80%? Yeah, that's not bad. You can't beat that. And they started to smell us, too. You could tell they were yeah. all on high alert. It's so crazy. We were so close to them, and they had no idea we were there. But when they started smelling us, you could tell they were all just kind of like looking around. All of a sudden, they started to run out. That's when I decided to stand up and just let her fly. Well. We got some dinner. Boom. This is a sow right here. So these are the baby makers. These are the ones we want to kill. Now Morgan is pretty sure that I shot and hit at least four hogs. There was another one way deep in the woods that we saw. We haven't recovered the other two bodies. These are incredibly invasive animals. These things cause annually $2.5 billion worth of damage to like farmlands, agricultural damage every year in the United States. It also costs the United States $1.5 billion a year for feral swine control, i.e. hunters, guns, ammo, vehicles, buildings, jobs, you know, all that stuff costs a lot of money. Four billion dollar negative impact per year in the United States. So we've got to get rid of these things. Any chance you get, you get rid of as many as you can. And since this one's a sow, that's a really good one to get rid of. More importantly, now me and you, we've got some food to look forward to because neighbor Daryl has a very special recipe in mind for this hog right there. There's something about hunting for actual food that really, you know, gets you going. You yes, know what it I mean? Does. Yep. When you're hunting to eat, it has a completely different feel than normal hunting does. And we'll check the grocery store. That's right. All organic. Hey, y'all, we're back. We are back. Got, oh God, my bag's ripping. We're back with our black bag, changed out of our wet clothes. The weather got wild with y'all. I've been sitting on the back of the buggy. Yeah, with Andrew. With Andrew. Who got yeah. So, oh, God, so. <laughs> Luckily, the hunt was obviously super successful. Got the meat that we needed, got to eradicate some hogs. And now you are going to drop some recipe knowledge. I am. On the people First, at home. tell me about the hog kid, but I heard you shot more than one. I hit four, apparently. And apparently, <laughs> we did some replays, or Andrew yes. did. It's possible that I didn't miss any you of did the it. hogs. You did it. Oh, so you shot it more than four? Yes. That were like 50 yards? Yeah, give, give or, or take. take. Yeah, you know, give or take. Somewhere in that range. We got meal number two. Two. Yeah, number two, right? We got, we got a trot line set out for meal number three that I know there's fish on. I come by it earlier. I oh, really? It, I've seen it jerking. Right. And it could be bass. Yeah, it could be anything. It, we got we shrimp for bait. It could be a turtle. Could be it could be anything. Well, it could be a turtle. Very well could oh, be. Oh, God, it Very might well be a turtle. Be. We're going to need to put this thing in there and let it cook for a few hours before we can even touch it. So that'll give us time to go check the trot line and do some other stuff as well. But yeah. Luckily, that little did cook quick. All right, this is a, actually, it was an internet sensation last year. It's called They call it Mississippi Pot Roast. And there's like five basic ingredients. I add the garlic. Now, not everybody adds garlic. The, the original recipe didn't have garlic. Take it out. And a stick of butter, which is outside. All you do is you put your, and you don't have to, to sear it. You can, and uh, but you don't have to. You stick that in. You take a whole jar of Greek peppers, and pepper seed peppers. And you put a half the juice in or all the juice. And I like all the juice. The more juice you get, the hotter it's going to get. You have to run here. Just yeah. pour the whole. We want all the juice. Yeah, we want, yep. we want everything. And then peppers are mild. Then you get a pack of all juice, the all juice gravy mix. It's just dry gravy. Some of the sides. And then a pack of Hidden Valley Ranch, ranch seasoning. seasoning. I've made pot roast my whole life, but I've never put ranch in it or raw juice. 
Or Greek pepper. God, that smells so good. Oh, dude. It this does. Just you cover this up. I'll put a stick of butter on top and we'll cook it for an hour or two. And I add now, this makes an Alabama pot roast. I add potatoes and carrots. Well, you got to. You can add celery. Dude, smell that. Oh, yeah. Smell it. Oh, those peppers are... Mm. The, the flavors are already congealing. We haven't even started cooking them. Yeah, let's get this thing buttered up, get the top on it, get it on top of those coals, because we want to be able to eat this thing soon, but it's got to cook for a couple, few it's hours. It's going to take a couple hours. Then we'll shred the meat up. We've got to put the carrots and potatoes. It'll take about an hour to cook. That's going to be oh, so dude, good. Oh, dude, I can't wait. <laughs> God, you're right, that is hot. Yeah, yeah. Is this going to support this heavy junker? That's we'll going to find out. That's going to find out. It might with heat. This is awesome. Slide her up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is so money. You know how good this is going to be once it's cooked for a few hours? Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be crazy. But if you want on a survival trip, now you want like some garlic bread or some dinner rolls where you can sop up that old gravy. It's going to yep. be Yep. Uh huh. All right, folks, we're leaving camp behind. We got the Alabama pot roast cooking. In the meantime, really want to go check this trot line. It had confirmed fish on it earlier. We don't know what type of fish. We don't know how big they were. Don't know if they're still on there now. But this seems like the perfect moment to go check because the longer we leave that trot line down there with fish on it, the higher the chances of it getting all snagged up, tangled up around something, and us losing the fish. The great part is, since we've already got dinner covered for tonight, if we can recover some fish out of the backyard pond tonight, we can just keep them on ice overnight yep. and just have them either tomorrow as breakfast or lunch, you know? Perfect. Just have some more food for tomorrow. And we're still gonna go deer hunting tomorrow morning. So we might even have some venison on the menu as well. So oh, yeah. we got a lot going on. First things first, let's go actually check this trot line, see what's on it. Oh, I see it working. Is it moving? Uh-oh. Oh, shoot. Let me see if I can feel something. Gosh, I feel a lot of weight down there. Holy we moly. Multiple. Let me pull on it some. Oh yeah, there's definitely fish. Oh, there's fish right there. <laughs> okay, yeah, cut your end, Daryl. Right. Cut your end. We got a big one on there. Look at that fish. Here. All right, I'm gonna start pulling them in. Watch yourself, dude. There's hooks everywhere. Dead. All these hooks don't have bait anymore, man. So who knows how many there were on there at one time. Seriously. But there's still one on there. Oh yeah, there he is right there. Oh, there might be two. There might be multiple. There's multiple. There's multiple. Oh, we got one right here. Oh God, I almost had a hook in the hand. And then we got, what is that? Oh, it's a log. Oh gosh, it's a log. We still got one though. Here we go. We got food for tomorrow. Well, he looked a lot bigger than that, didn't he? Yes, he did. But still, he was kind of barely hooked right there. He wasn't hooked great. That's a good eating size catfish though. Really good size fillets right there. That fish right there is gonna eat up real good for either breakfast or lunch tomorrow, who knows? I thought we were gonna have more than one on there. I did too, but I think these sorry hooks. You know, that's some hooks that come with the trot line? Yeah. If we'd had circle hooks on there. You know what, them. you're right. We'd yeah. have four hours. But hey, we got this guy we can put in, go ahead and put him on ice real quick. Oh man. Give him a little ice bath. That was intense. Off right here. One broke off? Yeah, that ain't the one I could. I don't pass the one I could. Oh, wow. So at least one fish broke off, at least one. None of the hooks had bait, so they probably all got hit. Yeah, I'm sure hit by something. More importantly, we've got some more food. We've got another meal secured, probably for tomorrow, because let's be honest, we want to eat that Mississippi Alabama pot roast. I oh, mean, yeah. that's that's like priority number one. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're technically good. We, we, we would be good for a long time in a real life scenario, but we're still going to try to deer hunt in the morning and we're still going to try to potentially hunt for something else midday. I'm not sure, but man, it's been one heck of a day one so far. We're like eight or nine hours into day one and we have done a lot, man. We've done a little bit of fishing, done a little bit of hunting. I like the balance that we got going on. We hadn't even got to the best part yet. Supper time at the camp house is very soon and we are not going to be late for that party. Ah, 
I do that? Can't clear you. Set one side down. Yeah. It it's is shredded. It's hater. Take a look here. at the final product that lids on. Oh man, that's piping hot. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Holy. I hope Tater's got done. Moly. Yeah, you know taters are kind of a pain to get done on a they fire, are. but dude, look at that. It looks so good. Well, there's and you talk about plenty. We've got to invent smell a vision so people can smell. No kidding. Through the video. Oh my gosh. And that's a unique if people's never had it with that pepper, it's a unique flavor. I was, yeah. When I first had it, I was blown away. I'm gonna make you a plate, buddy, okay? Are you dang? You just tell me when to stop, because I know you. You we literally Well, we like, haven't eaten, so uh we're uh, we're very hungry, so we're not gonna be shy about this. Oh, uh, the silverware's on the bottom of this right here. Let's well, see, so yeah, give me another one of them potatoes. That'll be good for now. Okay. That'll All be right. good for now. I love everything about a roast. Like I, I can't even pick my favorite thing, the carrots, the potatoes. Me either. All right, I'm gonna grab your plate, Andrew. Let's head in, put our food down. We cannot afford to spill this. No, we cannot. I'll get the door for you, sir. Okay, let's just get a real live, uncut taste test here. Dear Lord. First of all, the meat's like crazy tender. All right, Daryl. All right. That's my chair. That is amazing. I bet. Oh my God. It's gonna be better if you had an old, uh, an old roll to sop up all that juice with. God, it's so good. The pepperoncini and the juice adds so it much. It does. It's almost like a spice, but it's not spicy. And I don't taste the ranch seasoning really at all either. Let's check these potatoes, see how they look like they're perfectly done. Oh my God, how hot. That pork turned out so good. Got slow cooking it like that, mm -hmm. over that, that medium heat, I guess you'd say. We had to feed the fire a few times, put in a little bit of fresh wood, <clears throat> just to keep those coals real hot. This was a pretty low maintenance meal. I mean, oh, you yeah. just dump everything Ideally, in Ideally, if you had charcoal, you just throw two or three charcoal briquettes in there every 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, you gotta get in here, man. Oh, I am. Yeah. Let's see. Time to be honest. <clears throat> I actually might prefer the pork over beef. <laughs> it's so good. That's good. That's really good. The texture of the pork is just exceptional. That's good. This is the type of meal that would, on a normal day, be a 10 out of 10, but on a day where you have not eaten much, because we had the bass, but there wasn't a lot of food there, this is like an 11 out of 10. You guys know what I mean when you have not eaten all day, when you've just been out there grinding, working, whatever, and you get that nice, hot, amazing meal like that from a wild boar, so helping the environment at the same time, that's a good day. Okay, we're gonna finish this. We'll get back with you. We do what it's been five degrees turn out like this. Not me. Call it clove? Two what? whole cloves. Yeah. Probably could use. Yeah, I like garlic. I love garlic. Who doesn't like garlic? I mean, geez, but, uh... You guys can see the fire is dwindling. It's getting a little late. It's gonna be time soon to be hitting the rack, going to bed, because we gotta get up early in the morning. Me and Andrew are bow hunting for deer. Well, for anything really, but deer is the primary target. What's up, buddy? You ready to go hunt in the morning? I am. I am. I'm feeling good about the morning. Well, I didn't see a whole lot of anything this morning. I saw literally nothing, in fact. So I went ahead and headed on back early. I'm going to let Andrew just go ahead and hang out there all morning. That boy loves to be up in the saddle and hunt with his bow and arrow, so I'm just going to let him do so. I think I need to get this fire resurrected because one of me and Andrew's favorite things to do when we're camping out here is use this little percolator coffee pot right here and make fresh, fresh coffee on a campfire. I think I'm going to have a nice hot pot going by the time he gets back. And who knows, maybe Andrew will shoot something else so we can have even more food today for this challenge. But since I can't hunt a coffee bean, I'm just going to make some coffee. Oh my goodness, there we go. When you get right on down to it, some of the best things about camping are just sitting around next to a fire, putting your feet right next to the fire, 
enjoying the warmth on a cold winter day and just get smoked right in the face. <laughs> if you guys don't believe us about how good this stuff was from last night, check it out. That's what's left <laughs> out of that whole pot. Me, Andrew, and Daryl ate almost that entire thing. Starting to get a little hungry this morning though, obviously. Been up for a few hours now. Now we have a catfish in the cooler back by the backyard pond, but I'm not gonna use that yet until we have confirmed information that Andrew's hunt has been a failure like mine was. Uh, yeah. I heard you've got a story to tell us here, yes, buddy. Yes, I do. <laughs> so I was leaving my little spot, and I see a squirrel that's not running away from me coming directly at him. And then the closer I get, I notice it's laying down. But then as I roll over top of it, I realize there's a freaking rattlesnake next to it. So I circle back around, oh, and dude, he's starting to eat the squirrel. So he was like unhinging his it, jaw and everything? It, like his head in there. Oh, it was just sitting there. God. And then, yeah. I, I kind of interrupted his meal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we could have eaten that rattlesnake. Have you yeah. ever cleaned a rattlesnake oh, yeah. before? Yeah. Yeah. Still there. We could go clean him. <laughs> Dude, that is insane. That's crazy. Dude, yeah. So no deer, but you did no intervene deer, but... in a rattlesnake eating his meal. Couldn't save the squirrel's life, but <laughs> I took the rattlesnake's life. The coffee's still not quite ready, so we're gonna run back to where Andrew just had this encounter with the rattlesnake eating a squirrel. I've already got one in my freezer that I killed a few weeks ago at my house. I've been saving it because Daryl can skin them, stretch them, tan them, and we can put them on like a decorative piece of wood or something. That'll but, be awesome. Or obviously you can make boots or a belt or whatever you want. So let's hopefully, let's go recover this guy and add him to our freezer full of rattlesnakes. Sounds good. Good. Here, yeah, let, let the head just, or there is no head anymore, but let that hang by your boot. Let's show me how like long that thing was again. Like hold it right next to your body. So he's up to my shot. Oh, oh he's shoot. moving. <laughs> I about said cuss words on Dude. YouTube. Dude. He totally just What? Bro, Tried to bite he you? He just pissed on me. Really? And I just felt it hit my face. I could smell it. I can smell it. He just pissed on piss? me. He's, he's oh, pissed. Oh. I've never even heard of that happening. Do you oh you don't smell that, dude? <laughs> We've got some things going on here. Okay, yeah, I, that's... <laughs> oh, no. Damn, dude, what did he freaking spray on you? Hey, he pissed on me. I seen it. He was trying to eat that oh. poor soul right there. So he already had him in his mouth. He was working on him. Oh, my gosh. Dude, I would love to know the story behind that, though. Well, the story for this guy is over. His story's ended. <laughs> Yep. This guy's story has ended. Man, we could have eaten this thing. Luckily, we don't have to resort to this because I think neighbor Daryl is going to treat us to something really nice this morning. He's got a little bit of leftover hog that he's prepared a little bit of a different way. So why don't we get you cleaned up because yeah, you so bad. have been peed on by a snake. Let's get you cleaned up. Let's get this guy bagged up and in the freezer so we can do something cool with him later on. And let's head back to camp. Good job, buddy. Way Thank to rid you. the world of one more rattlesnake. Try my best. So what was it that that <laughs> snake just sprayed Andrew with? <laughs> like a skunk musk. He'll spray you. That's his second line of defense. He got me right here. That's his other line of defense. He sprays that musk on you. He, sp he sprays it out from down where his rattler is? Yeah, I guess. I don't work. I, I assume that's... Uh-huh. Well, comes out yeah, from like underneath. Pisses up, right, yeah, yep. like a skunk. Yeah. <laughs> no. Because I've seen it coming. Yeah. So it's not pee. Well, it, it might matter. be some parts it's pee. something yeah. that stinks on my face. Well, I think I know somebody. Whew. He got Gosh. you too. Well, I was gonna say I need I know somebody who needs a cup of coffee being <laughs> Andrew, need but it too. off camera, I just got sprayed. We were pulling the snake out to show Daryl and its body turned and just <laughs> So I came Thank God he didn't get me. I came right to the water bucket and just like Oh, I'll show me at the water bucket, yeah. Yeah, oh my god, but it's all over my face. It's so bad, dude. It. Okay, well, we both need a cup of coffee. Yes, we do. Desperately. And somebody let us know if uh, that musk is toxic because we're not going to go to the doctor. We're just going to sit here and drink a cup of coffee. So hopefully it's not life-threatening. If it does, then I get both y'all's breakfast. The coffee started percolating while we were out there snake harvesting. So, oh, that smells so much better than 
rattlesnake musk? <laughs> yes, it does. Oh, yeah. Dang. Oh, it's piping hot, too. Oh, it's, I don't know it's burning your lips hot. Camp coffee, baby. There you are, kind sir. Thank you. I need that My face so much. Covered. See, with now that. you know I was gagging. <laughs> no, I do know. It's on my lips. I don't know how much you got versus how much I got. I just know my whole face. <laughs> yeah, I, my whole face. I felt it go bet uh, like between my fingers when it hit you. Like I knew it was uh, happening. I just didn't know where it was going. I've already showed you guys some cool Garmin products in this video, but probably the most essential product that you might need if you're anybody who enjoys the wilderness camping survival hunting but you find yourself in some sketchy deep forest locations without a lot of service this is a satellite device right here giving you the ability to send a distress signal or message somebody even in the worst cellular zones out there this little thing right here this little thing right here is a lifesaver. Along with the simple ability, like being able to two-way message with your contacts or send an SOS signal if you're in trouble, what this thing is gonna do at the end of the day, this thing is going to help you if you're off the grid or if you're somewhere way out in the woods, this thing is gonna allow you to check the weather accurately. It's gonna allow you to navigate successfully and it's gonna keep you connected just in case. There's been a few times in my life where I would have killed to have a Garmin inReach device with me. Now, me and Andrew are gonna have these things with us literally wherever we go. The best part is, guys, this inReach device is going to be included on the site-wide huge sale that Garmin's doing right now. It's a perfect gift for the outdoorsman in your life, whether it be Black Friday shopping, Christmas shopping, whatever it is you're doing, this thing is marked down just like everything else. Click the link in the description, go check it out. All right, Darrell, walk me through what we got going on here. This is the tender one off that hog y'all killed. I cut it three pieces, and I got two teriyaki, because that's what you showed you like. And I done one, I've never had this experiment. It's, it's garlic and different kind of Italian herbs and stuff. And I'm gonna have that, I've had the teriyaki, I just wanna see what that tastes like. And uh, they've this... been cooking on the fire for about two hours. Oh my gosh. We don't even deserve food this good on a regular basis. <laughs> no, we basis. don't. It smells a lot better than that rattlesnake musk, I'll tell you that. <laughs> you dang right. Take a look at one of these teriyaki wild hog loins. Yeah. Pretty fine little breakfast. Oh yeah. There we go. It smells so dang good too. Oh, the tenderness is definitely there. Oh, is it there? That's what I was worried about. I thought no, I mean, it took about two hours. It's pretty about dang tender. Because you really want to get about 200 to break it down. It was like 170 when I checked it. I mean, I, I just tore that piece off pretty yeah. good. I mean, I'm just going in, Andrew. Up, Do it. God, oh, that it smells so good. Mmm. Damn, my teriyaki's good. Oh, it was a piece of tinfoil I almost ate. Mmm. Mm. God, oh, that's good. That was a perfect size hog. Perfect. It was. It perfect. Really was. You can tell now that I've eaten a few different wild hogs of different sizes, that 50 pound range is definitely where yep. you want to be. But this was only cooked for a few hours on a campfire. And you still get, you're not, you're probably not at ideal tenderness yet, but you're really close. So that one is a garlic. This is garlic Italian herbs, hotter than a son it. of a bitch. Gosh. Grab your piece off here and try that and try the difference there. I don't mind if I do. Garlic parm in there. Grab a piece of that cameraman with your fingers there. Good Lord. That might be the best one, honestly. Hmm. Although I love teriyaki but they're both, honestly, exceptional. I love teriyaki too, and I said, I'm gonna try one different one. They're both good. You, good. Need to, you need to get get in here and try both because it's kind of a tough call. Mm -hmm. Either way, we're doing just fine for breakfast this morning. We've still got a couple more hours left in this challenge and hopefully one more meal to eat, if that catfish is still there, we haven't even checked. You think a raccoon could open a cooler? I think I bet, it dude, could. if it can open a trash can, why can't it open a cooler? But in the meantime, we're moving a couple trail cams around. Ow, that's a terrible thorn bush. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. You hear that? You'd show the kind people right there that scrape. Here's a little man made scrape, one of them that the bucks have been working. So I'm going to try to get some good pictures of the buck working these scrapes. No, oh, I think, actually, that, I think that's back behind it. No, I think that's perfect. All right. We're gonna get some pictures or video of a deer working our fake scrape. We're gonna do that before the season's over with.
Andrew's walking in the woods over there about 20, 30 yards, and he's gonna do a little artificial scraping. The thinking behind that is, so if that buck is coming in to freshen up this scrape, and he wants to wind check it and maybe come in like 20 yards behind it, 30 yards behind it, that would lead him to this little clearing right here. And that's where we've got one of our stands is up in this little area. It just covers all of this clearing right here. It's like a little cut through road in between big food plot areas in here. Sounds like a good plan. Over here on this end, we got a trail cam on this tree pointing towards our trough, which is kind of over off in the middle of all this. No, we got to find a way to hunt back here because we're, we know that deer always like travel that? through that little road back there. That's one you just come in on. Yeah. Okay. No, you're right. This is like a tiny little clearing, but man, it seems like there's a lot of deer movement through here. I like your scrape right here, man. Interesting shape and design, but it looks very authentic. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I mean, this is plain as day. Game trail right here. Dude, this little clearing right here, man. Oh my gosh. And this is that road that we're always seeing them on. Sit up on that one tree right there, that one naked one. Yeah, you could. Yeah, man, this looks like a good spot right here, brother. Guys, we have just found the mega scrape. It goes all the way over there. Oh my lord. All those tracks in there. Oh my. That's one of the bigger scrapes we've seen on the property a as a whole. A Gosh, so we're going to freshen this thing up, add a little bit of uh, Alabama man urine, the best kind. And then we're going to put a camera on this too because we want to see the bucks that are coming around here and adding their name to the list of scrape people. Think he's still in there? Feels like he's still in there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We stay eating out here. That's right. We don't just survive off the land. We thrive out here. We've got such a diverse diet, it's kind of crazy. It has been a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, and if we if we really wanted to spice it up, we could have eaten the rattlesnake and the squirrel, and we would have had a lot of different stuff. You could have had the squirrel. I'll pass on that girl. Oh yeah, it may have been full of rattlesnake venom. Potentially. Our buddy here has been doing a nice little overnight ice water soak. What would you say, catfish or bass are easier to fillet? Probably a catfish. Yeah, probably. I'm not really good at any of it. I just try my best, to be honest with you. Okay. Yeah, catfish are definitely easier. Boom. Dude, big old chunk of meat. Look at that. Look at that. We're going to use the same pan, the same, the whole same setup from yesterday. That was not as good. Keep a real close eye on the heat. I think these are gonna be really good. You see how hot that oil is? Oh yeah. Have you ever had rattlesnake? Yes, I have. You, oh, so you have eaten rattlesnake? Oh yeah, my granddad used to cook it for me all the time. I thought me and you had had that conversation before and you said it tasted like... Dude, it tastes just like chicken. I know they say that about everything, but if, if it's the most like chicken. Is it white meat? I mean, it has its own, yeah, it's a white meat, yeah. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. See, that piece is already kind of firming up. Oh, that one's definitely crispy. Oh, look how brown that one's getting, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Pretty crispy. Pretty good. Pretty crispy. Those ones did not get this crispy, but let's see if I can get a crunch here. 
Ooh. Will be real quiet. Ha. Hmm. Now see, to me, that's a much better eating fish than bass. Yeah, know? definitely. Mm, the bass wasn't bad. We just needed something to kick this up with. We needed something spicy to throw in there, like seasoning wise. We just used some real basic seasoning or a sauce to dip in there or something. Would you like to grab your piece? Yes, please. Mm. This is it, this is mm -hmm. me? Yes, you big Thank dog. You. Tartar sauce maybe, maybe some hot tartar sauce. I'll tell you what's really good on fish that you wouldn't think so. Like a buffalo ranch mixture for fish. It's very, very, very good. I bet. I had it at Flair's house. He gave it to me and he was like, try this on fish. and best combination ever and for some reason I had never thought about buffalo ranch fish you know like fried yeah, fish. Yeah no to be honest me either. That's right, delicious. This is a very nice last meal for me and Andrew. As you guys can see it is 12 45 p.m. the following day so it's been a wonderful 24 hours. I can't even believe all the things that we did. We had contact with all types of different animals in different situations. Got to eat a few different things. Got to enjoy food not only from the land but from the water on our, in our backyard, essentially. It's really cool to demonstrate how much nature can actually provide in the ways of food. So it was really fun making this video. And anytime's a fun time that we can get out here and camp, we can go hunting, we did this last year. We'll definitely do this more times this year if you guys wanna see it, just give us suggestions down there of different ideas of things to do. But we're out here anyways doing this stuff all the time. Big shout out to Neighbor Daryl, of course cooked a couple things for us, helped immensely as he always does. And a big shout out to you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, big shout out to Garmin for sponsoring today's video. Go check them out. They've got a massive sale going on on a bunch of their different products. I've been using their stuff for years. They're a great company. Big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you tune in for future videos. Love you guys so much. Thank you for watching.